In this video, we're going to talk all about milling bits. So in this video I'm going to cover some basics I wish I knew when I was first starting out using my ox metal to machine some wood, alloy and plastics. Things like basic types of what bits I should use, uh, what bits are suitable for what tasks such as engraving, cutting or hole drilling, that kind of thing. So I'm going to go over some of the basics and hopefully uh, if you've just started out in the world of CNC and you're wondering what to buy in the way of cutters, this video should help you along that way. Full disclosure, I am not a professional machinist. In fact, if you are a professional machinist, you probably want to go watch a video with some cats in it or something because uh, this is probably going to make you cringe at some point. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the bits I've used and what they can and can't do. So this is perhaps the most common style milling bit I use in the ox metal. This is called a slot mill. And what this bit can do is cut out pretty much anything I want. Uh, it's designed in a manner that allows the milling bit to be plunged into the metal and start cutting. Whereas some other styles of cutters such as end mills have to start away from the material and work inwards to them. They can't actually plunge down and cut the material out. The cutters are just not designed for that. Um, so these come, as you can imagine, in a huge vast amount of sizes. But the three most common I use are these three here. We've got one millimeter, three millimeter, and then six millimeter slot mills. So as an example of what a one millimeter slot mill can do, uh, this was a blank PCB board, so it's a uh, fiberglass with a very thin layer of copper on the underside, uh, is you can use your one millimeter slot mill to mill out all the copper traces. And this is a fairly effective way of rapid prototyping a very basic PCB. When it comes to doing very fine traces, and there are a lot of them, uh, I think it's just better to go get uh, the made in China or something and mailed to you for ten dollars. But nevertheless, this is a very effective method. The only downside to this, which I quickly learned, was the fiberglass, once it's been milled, basically turns to a powder. Uh, two things, you don't want to breathe it in naturally. And second of all, because it's uh, glass fibers and they're a powder, uh, it essentially works as an abrasive to wear away the cutters. So I was only able to machine out about uh, I think it was six of these before the cutter was completely dulled and in fact the cutting surface was actually completely rounded over. Uh, a worthwhile investment if you were going to cut out fiberglass would be in carbide uh, tipped cutters because they'll last much much longer. Now for machining out something like the Batarang, which if you haven't seen the video and you want to check it out there'll be a link in the video's corner pop up here, um, I used a three millimeter slot mill. Now you might look at this battering and think that surface finish is a bit poor, a bit rough, and you'd be right. However, don't think that's a limitation of the mill or the milling bit I was using. Rather, this is just the settings I chose um, because I was still experimenting at the time and just wanted to cut something out rough and quick. However, to some people, including myself, I actually find this style of finish quite appealing. It looks quite neat rather than just a, a mirror finish. So now let's talk about why in some cases you would choose a 6mm uh, milling bit over a 3mm. Let's start with the 6mm bit. Let's say I was machining out this plate again. Uh, what would be better to use, a 3mm or a 6mm? Well, in this case, because of its size and the fact that uh, all the holes are relatively large that I'm milling, it would make sense to go for the 6mm slot mill. And this is principally because the larger the milling bit, the larger the flute should be, and the more material they can clear faster. However, you wouldn't want to use the 6mm slot mill for something like the Batarang. And that's because when you're trying to get clean, tight corners, your smallest radius is going to be 3mm, 
So that's going to lose a bit of detail and make everything look a little bit more rounded. So that's where the 3mm slot mill comes in. Now you could take it a step further and even use the 1mm, but oh boy would you have to be patient because this stuff with those really tiny flutes does not move material very quick. But its trump card is pretty obvious. The detail it can get is very, very good. So let's talk about engraving. So you can see I've engraved this text on this alloy plate. Uh, it's four millimeters in height and one tenth of a millimeter deep. And oh, the style of cutter I used for this uh, is it's got a few names, if I'm honest. Especially if you search around the internet, it seems to be a new one. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as a V cut, V cutter. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as a knife or a flat cutter. Um, you can see on one side it's completely ground flat and on the other it's obviously the radius of the shank. And basically you can get these in varying uh, pitches or angles to give you a different look on the text. And also you can imagine, uh, due to the style of the cutter, uh, how far you plunge this into the material will also give the edge a chamfer to the text and give you different looks. Um, another option, of course, which is well known, is uh, Dremel's engraving bits. So this is a ball cutter which is uh, quite widely used. Uh, it gives a nice uh, radius to the text that you're engraving. And these generally come in uh, HSS, whereas the V cutter I showed you there was in um, carbide. Although you can also get them in HSS. Now, if you watched my ox metal build video, uh, if you haven't you want to check it out, there'll be a link in the video's corner. You'll know that I used a Makita quarter inch router for the spindle. Now, it's worked out great. The motor's got tons of power, more than enough for the milling I do. Uh, but there is a catch, and that's that Makita only makes a quarter inch collet to fit the router. Now, that's a little bit of a problem because it severely limits what you can and can't run on your CNC mill. So I'm going to show you a couple uh, things I've come up with to get around this problem. So let's say you want to use a Dremel uh, engraving bit like I've got here. Now in round figures this is 3.2 millimeters and the collet is quarter inch. So obviously these two aren't going to work too happily together. So that's where this collet adapter comes in. Now this has actually worked out rather well for me. I haven't had any problems with wobble or anything like that. Not that I can tell anyway. Now if you want to check this out, there'll be a link in the video's description to purchase it off eBay. So this goes from quarter inch down to 3.2 millimeters, and then you can run your Dremel bits. Uh, the other thing this allows you to do is run a three millimeter um, drill bit, twist drill, and what that means is I can now drill out all the holes, for instance, on this metal plate I milled out. Uh, and there is another thing as well. Um, although quarter inch is relatively close to six millimeter, uh, there is a bit of wobble and wiggle. So basically how to get around this is, yes, you could crank on the nut a little bit more and the collet should take up that extra space, or what I've found works really well is you take an aluminium can, you cut a section out with a pair of scissors, wrap it around the uh, slot mill here which has got a six millimeter shaft and then that takes up the very fine gap between quarter inch and six millimeter brilliantly and I haven't had any problems using this technique at all. So that's a couple of the ways to get around um, using different size milling bits. Now something I'm looking at doing in the future is upgrading my Makita quarter inch router to a spindle that has an ER11 collet on it. And basically uh, with an ER11 collet you can get a full set of collets which take anywhere from one to seven millimeter uh, shank sizes. So that would basically allow me to use any milling bit I would be interested in using. Now let's move on to speed and feed rates. Now take the next bit of information with a big pinch of salt because in no way am I implying that these feed rates are optimized, they're what you should use, um, and you know, so forth and so on. That's not, that's not what they're here for. 
basically I'm giving you a bunch of figures that I use on my mill with these milling bits on my material that I'm milling. A whole lot of disclaimers in there I know, but essentially uh, it, quite likely that when you're first starting out you're going to break a few milling bits. That's just unfortunate, but it's what happens to me and a lot of people. So if I can give you some information to hopefully reduce that learning process, give you some figures to start working with, some feed rates and so forth, then hopefully it'll make the learning process a lot less complicated. So I'll include a link down in the video's description to download a zip file which will contain three text files for one, three and six millimeter milling bits. They'll cover wood, plastic and aluminium. Uh, and give you a broad idea of the type of speeds I'm using on my ox metal so hopefully you can use something around those same speeds just gives you a ballpark to work from so I hope you found this video useful if you did give it a like it would be much appreciated and while you're down there check out some of my other videos there might be something in there you like too other than that thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next video bye for now